Hello and welcome to Control Delete Tutorials. This is going to be the final video, I promise the final video in this series of how to create a leafy tree. Yeah, I still haven't come up with a better title than that. We're going to stick with leafy tree because we had our pine tree video and it's a pine tree. Uh, I don't think too many people would search for uh, deciduous, uh, deciduous, see I can't even say it, so I wouldn't even search for it, trees. Um, so we're just going to say leafy tree. That's going to be what it's called. It's a great name. So in the last video, we had created these tree branches, small tree branches. And even though it looks like these are only one sided over here, it will indeed render both sides. Let's change our rendering background color here just so we can see this a little better. So we'll just set that to medium gray. And we'll re-render. And you can see it's two-sided. All right. Looking good. Uh, the ones over here kind of have a little bit more depth to them because we've taken that panel and we've now rotated it two different directions. So this one should look a little more 3D than the other one. This is kind of how we deal with um, leaves and branches and stuff in games. And same idea over here. Although in games we're going to be a little bit more limited on detail, so we might not use quite so many leaves. We might have more leaf groups than this. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, if you didn't see in the last video, we had created three um, kind of groups uh, from this to use in our object paint. Now one thing I want to make sure is that my pivot point is still pretty close to the bottom here. So we're uh, pretty close. I might go to my hierarchy effect pivot point only and just move that over to the center of the branch. And I want to check that on my other ones here as well. Uh, that one stayed pretty pretty good. Let's see how this one looks. And I just hit Z there. Oh, so you can see there, we're kind of far off here. So we just want to affect that pivot point only and move that there. Because when I paint this on the tree, that's where it's going to come out from. And I don't want things to get really weird. Okay. So we're going to go... We want to make sure that we're painting with objects in the list. We need to add our objects to the list, so we'll just select these three. I'll say Add Selected. We want to make sure we're set to Paint All Randomly. But we're not going to paint anything just yet, because we don't have anything to paint on. I mean, I could put a sphere in here and show you what this is going to look like. You know, if I go to Paint, I want to make sure I'm using Selected Objects. There we go. Super tree. But we don't want that. We want to paint it onto tree branch or onto a tree base. So we have a couple ways that we can do this. One, we have the branch tool. Branch tool is really, really nice. Um, it has a couple of things that um, I think could be better about it just for texturing purposes. Uh, it does make it a little bit difficult to texture. Um, but I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to start off with a cylinder. Now, some of the settings I want to change immediately. Height segments, I'm going to right click on that spinner, setting it to one. Cap segments one, sides. Uh, I currently only want this to be either eight or six sided uh, because I can always turbo smooth this. And so I can always add more to it. But this makes it a little bit easier to deal with. I'm going to start from the center here. And this is basically going to be my tree trunk. I want to change my height here to a, whoops, sorry, positive value here. And I'm not going to go too big. I don't want to go too high here. And I'm going to right click and convert this to an editable poly. And I'm crazy. I like to move everything to zero, zero, zero at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the polygon that's here on the bottom. 
But before I do that, let's just scale that out a little bit just to make the base of it a little bigger. I'm going to hit delete. And I'm just going to drag a little bit of this down into the ground. The reason I do that is so when I paint this or when I create this, it's going to create it and it's going to have uh, a little bit below the ground so that uh, if this is directly on the ground, I don't see the bottom of the tree like floating up. I'm also going to just make this... Uh, sorry, if you hit F2, it turns off the shading there, and I did that in a previous video. I just want to make sure you guys see what I'm seeing. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. So imagine, if you will, that this tree... I should probably call this tree this section is going to be below ground, so we won't see that. And you could always use the branch tool and make roots come out from here if you wanted. The reason that I want to use eight or six sided polygons is I want to have this one polygon. Now, typically, I don't like n-gons. I don't like polygons that are more than four sided. Um, they do a lot of really nasty stuff. But this works really good with the branch tool, and you'll see why in a second. The branch tool will extrude one branch based off of a brush stroke that I do. But it does it based off the direction the camera is looking also. So I want to give myself plenty of room to make my branch. Or make my tree, essentially. So we're going to go under Freeform, Branches. And we want to drop down this Poly Draw section. Our max distance here is set to Pixels. I want to set to units. In 3ds Max, these are our units right here. So this is 10 units and another 10 units and another 10 units. So if this is set to 10 units, every time I draw here, they'll be 10 units apart. Now that's pretty far. I'm going to probably half that to about 5, maybe 4. Okay. The other thing is, notice how when I draw, it looks nice and straight, but it does it based off of the angle I'm looking at it, so it's kind of slanted back. To give you a more extreme version of that, yeah, it looks like I'm extruding this up, but it's at an angle. Okay, We need to keep that in mind when we're drawing. <coughs> Sorry there. All right. So, poly draw. Now, in my case, I want this number to be about 4. Uh, if you want to have a different number, by all means, have a different number. You now let's go five. Let's not go four. Four is going to be just a little too close. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, give myself plenty of room to draw. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to essentially start from this red area. And that's going to be the first part of my tree trunk. Okay, now you can see what it does here. It's kind of slanted over. Okay, I don't want it to be slanted over like this so much. So I'm going to use this shift tool. And the shift tool is nice because we can just kind of grab sections here and kind of adjust. And kind of change this around a little so that it's a little more natural. That's a little more organic. I can, I can handle that. Maybe we'll bring that back a little bit. Okay. All right. So we have one section here. And I'm going to use a whole other section. Maybe I can come up from like this section and do another big branch. And we'll do one more. So I'll do like three or four other branches kind of coming off of here. So this is like the main trunk. And at the top, we have this, you know, kind of ugly and gone polygon. But we won't really worry about that. It should be okay. Okay, so since I can extrude out from one big polygon, what I like to do is give myself a six-sided polygon to kind of work with. So what I'll do is I'll select one of the edges here. I'm going to scale this a little bit, kind of make this a little more hex, uh, more of a hexagon shape. Maybe scale these sides down just a little bit. Okay, so it's more of a hexagon, and I'm going to hit backspace to remove that edge. 
so I can extrude out a branch from here. So I'll just select it. Backspace removes edges. And I'll draw where I want this branch to be. So it's like I first make a branch and then I can make branches off of branches. And so I'll just kind of draw that out. And I'll do that a couple different uh, spots. So I'll have one that's kind of down here somewhere. So we'll do the same step. Uh, you know what? We'll do this one over here so they're not all perfectly in a line. And I'm just going to scale this out, make a hexagon, backspace, select the polygon, kind of move to where I'm drawing this out, branch tool. Now, you can see here, I accidentally selected a, whole, a completely different one. You have to be careful with that. Okay, something like that. Not bad. Right click to get out of the tool. And we'll do another one. I'll use that one. So again, scale. Backspace. You don't have to select it. I just find it easier to see what I'm doing when I do that. Give ourselves plenty of room to draw. This will probably be the last one that I do on there. Branch tool. Yeah, that should be good. Now, unwrapping this is kind of... It's not a problem, but uh, it's not the easiest thing to unwrap. Um, the nice part about it is it's cylindrical for the most part for each section. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to unwrap it. Um, but really, I mean, that needs to be a whole other video. I'm going to do it a pretty sloppy job of it just so we can see. So I'm going to go into the polygon mode here. And there is a spline unwrap that works really nicely for something like this. That's what I'd recommend that you use. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another uh, version of that. So I'm going to just go ahead and put on my UV unwrap. Unwrap UVW. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty quick uh, demo for this just because I don't want to make a whole other video for that. So I'm turning off ignore back facing. I'm going to select the polygon here at the end and I will just grow my selection out until I get the entire branch. I'm going to open this in the UV editor. And for now I'm just going to where my tool. There we go, planar map. So I'm just going to planar map that for now, just to get that out of the way. Turn off planar map. So this is normally how I work when I unwrap. I select sections and I separate them. I'll select the polygon here. I'll grow my selection all the way to the main trunk section. I'm just going to planar map. I'll turn it on and off and just move this out of the way. And kind of rotate these up and down for now. The way I'm doing it is not necessarily going to be a bad unwrap. It's just a, it's not the most efficient way, I don't think, to do it. It might work fine for what you need. Select that end, grow my selection. And we'll do a planar map. Turn that back off. Move that out of here. Well, oh, that was weird. Uh, that's weird. I don't know why it was rotated from a weird direction. Okay, now I'm going to hit Control-A to select everything. 
I'm going to hold Alt and deselect everything here. So that just leaves my center area. Planar map. I will do that from the X direction. I'll move that out of the way. Okay. So now we need to select our our ends here because they're they would be kind of a problem. Oops. So we're in polygon mode, and I'm just going to select each one. Oh. Hold control, select the next one. And one on the end here. Okay, from here I'm just going to right click and break. What that's going to do is it's going to separate just those out. It's going to detach them from here. Okay, all of those, I'm going to say quick peel. And I'm going to pack those in. So that's just going to put them all here. Okay. So those are all the flat ends. Hey guys, so in this part of the video, we have a bit of a jump. Um, my software, my 3DS Mac software had crashed while I was unwrapping. And the cut here is a little weird. So I want to explain what's going on. So I'm using the seam tool here to select some seams. Now what I want you to do is I want you to select those seams uh, don't do the point to point, just select the seams, uh, the seams that I'm showing you, but select them in red. So they're, they're highlighted red and I want you to break. Uh, so I want you to go into the viewport and break those. Um, that's what I need you to do for that part of the video. Cause right now the way I'm editing this, I can already see it's not fitting together. So, um, yeah, so just go in. Select the seams that I show you to select, and then go into the Edit UVW um, panel uh, where we see the UVs, and right-click and say Break. It'll create a green seam. You want to make sure that the seam will end up being green uh, so that it'll match up with the next uh, little cut in the video. Um, again, if you don't see that, rewind back. Look at the seam that I create, select it, and don't use point-to-point -point seam because it it's just going to create a blue seam, uh, which is used for something that I was starting to show in another section of the video. Uh, but the video, uh, the 3D software, for whatever reason, just crashed. And I actually recorded this two or three times. And uh, both times uh, I had the same issue. So, again, make sure that you are uh, breaking that seam so it is green for this next part of the work, which is we're going to use the pelt tool which ends up working so uh, we'll get back to the video let's see here we have that <clears throat> split there so I'm going to select everything and I'm gonna to try to do a pelt on it and see if it'll allow that so we will <clears throat> select our stretcher and we're just going to start pelt. It's actually not awful. I'm just going to select everything here. Rotate it together. We'll select our stretcher again. Oops, hold on. Select stretcher. I'm going to scale this out a little bit tall ways. And we will start pelt again. And we will commit that. We'll move that out of the way. And I can always fix and organize things here as needed. So I think this method is going to allow us not to have the same issues. Um, it's not what I was going to show, but if what I'm going to show doesn't work, I'm going to show something else. I'll select this edge and I'm going to say loop. And deselect these ones here. So it should loop all the way up to there. I'm going to right click and say break just so it creates a seam there. That seam will allow me to do my pelt again.
what's going on here? It's really just it, software does not like me at all today. Let's loop this one. This is what I get for doing an impromptu unwrap live. All right, we'll break that side. I'm going to turn on element mode here for my selection type. And I don't trust in quick peel today. Man, I'm even nervous about doing <laughs> quick, uh, quick planer. Pelt. Commit. Rotate that. Now this will definitely not be the best unwrap ever. Pelt. Start pelt, commit. This is only needed if you're texturing it at the same time. Now the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm having to separate this, is because the pelt is also not taken into consideration my seams for some reason. So, well, that's fine. Uh, I'll loop. I'll deselect what I don't want out of here. You know what? Let's go ahead and we'll just loop both sides. That way we can deselect it all at once. And we'll break both. Select one side of the tree. Pelt. Start pelt. Commit. This will be the other side, or the one side. Pelt, start pelt, commit, rotate. See, normally what would happen when I hit quick peel is it basically do something like this. So it's really just making me have to do a longer process on this, which is very, very, very annoying. But that's what happens when you use 3D software sometimes. Select both sides and loop. Deselect the bottom here. And we'll deselect the top. Just in case that's selected. We'll right click and break those seams. We'll select one half. And pelt. Start pelt and commit. And I will end up putting uh, these seams back together on each side. Which I was hoping to not have to do, but it'll keep us from getting more seams than we really want. Pelt. At least you'll know a couple different ways of doing basically the same thing. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to go into my edge mode and I want to get my, oh, let's turn off element. I want to sew up so that my seam is fixed on top. That looks to be that one. So we'll put those sides together. So those are good. And I'll show you a way we can like straighten this stuff all up uh, also. Okay, then this side. Hoping that'll be the same. Yep, looks like that edge and that edge line up. So at the very least I'm getting lucky there. Okay, we'll line those up and weld them together. I'll show you an easy way that we can kind of do that. Uh, somewhat easy, I guess. And then same idea. Select one from this side. And we'll see that that is 
Uh, that's the one on the bottom. So flip flop these on each side. So those should be the same seams. Yep, right there. All right. So here's what we can do. If I select these on either side, I can scale these together. It's a little tedious. Uh, the other option is I can do a target weld. So if I right click, I can say target weld. I can just drag these to the ones they match up to. That works too. So we'll just match those up. And what we'll be able to do is we can set these up to where they're actually perfectly straight lines. I mean, now that we're doing it, we might as well <laughs> do it all the way. We'll still make this one video though. This last one. I'll just edit out all the problems from earlier, hopefully, if I remember. Although there was that really good auto back lesson in there. Just in case you ever lose stuff, always check there. Because it auto saves uh, every five minutes. So even if you think you forgot to save your file or something, chances are it's in there pretty close to where you left it. And we're just clicking and dragging these on. I wish I could do a really good Bob Ross impression because this would be the perfect spot to do it. Just talking about nothing here. Almost done. All right. So here's what we can do. If I select... Uh, make sure I'm not still in weld mode. There we go. So if I select all the edges here and all the edges here and you know what? Let's not be... Now we should be okay. And all the ones here and I hit loop which will select all the ones going parallel and I want to align but I want this drop down one. That's gonna straighten them all. Oh man, I did not anticipate all those ones doing it. Deselect those guys. Okay. So now it's this one here, aligned vertically in place. Boop, does that. And you can do the same thing going downward with them. If I wanna make these perfectly square. loop make sure we're not selecting any of this this is gonna be the same idea but this one vertically in place now oh, helps when you get these other ones involved And what's nice is we can have all of these tr um, tree textures overlap each other because they're basically using all the same texture. They're going to be using that uh, tiled tree texture that we made. So these can all just lay over one another. Which is really handy save space in our UV editor as well. All right, nice and straight. So now all I have to do is I can take all of this, move this up into my editor, and I just wanna get these as close as I can to each corner so that they'll tile. Okay, that's the first one. And 
And again, just moving these up. And they'll be pretty close. We might have small seams on them, but at this point, I just want to give you the idea of how we can unwrap these. They don't have to be perfect for right now. And after I get this section done, guess what we'll do? We'll save. All right, let's turn that off. We'll save our work. Go back to where we were, tree setup. Okay. So all the branches are going to be using the same tileable texture there. And we can do the same thing with this part here. Now this is a little trickier to get this to line up because if I select all these, let's turn off that. Can I ring that? Yeah, ring and then loop and that'll select all of them there. Uh, why are we not selecting here? There we go. And yeah, we'll probably have to do that to the bottom as well. Important part is we don't want to select any of the vertical ones. All right, so that's our vertical. And then our horizontal. So we'll loop that up there. Loop there. And we'll do those all in place. Now, they're not going to line up uh, completely because there's going to be some of them that they won't line up. Like this could line up with over here. But then these wouldn't be straight. So it's just kind of based off of the tree branch itself. I could select the entire part up here. Let's go vertex. And... I could try to make it let's make sure we didn't mess anything up here this all looks good still okay so these I could align together and then move them back over Same idea on this side, and deselect everything here so we don't mess any of that up. We'll line them in place, move them over. We'll loop that, loop that selection. Make sure we're not selecting anything there. Align these to pivot. And I'll just fix these real quick. Just adjust them a little bit. And I'm holding shift to move these uh, evenly. Now 
And I always deselect what's there. And again, I'm being a little bit more particular about this than I really need to be, but I figure I've already done it, I might as well oops, take you guys all the way through it at this point. I just keep deselecting there just in case. Align. We'll align these. And then these. All right, that's a little bit better. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. Just pack it in to the same area. And this one's technically bigger. But we'll just leave it for now. I mean, I could scale it up outside. Oh, come on outside of this and have it be like the size of four of these. Because it's okay that's out of this because it's tileable. It should scale it accordingly. Um, and then these ends, I'm just gonna pack them inside. So everything's going to overlap. Typically, I don't want everything to overlap, but since it's all using the same tileable texture, it'll be fine. So let me apply this, and we'll see what it looks like first. Now, the reason we do all this first is if we don't, it's going to use the materials from these tree branches, which is going to make this look really strange. So we need a material applied to it. So we're just going to create a standard. Call it tree bark. We'll put our bitmap in here. And that was our tileable tree bark, uh, tiled tree bark. Let's plug that into our diffuse. And we'll make sure we're showing in viewport and we'll assign it here to the tree. And if we look, our tree bark should follow all the way up. It's getting stretched out a little bit, okay? Um, but based off what we have happening, I'm pretty happy with just having this now at this point because we've gone through a lot of problems to get that. So we're going to stop there. That's, that's fine. Um, I'll save. And... I'm going to convert this now to an editable poly just so we don't lose any of that unwrap info. So that bakes in that unwrap info into this. And that actually doesn't look too bad. I'm, you know, all things considered, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next part is just simply painting on our uh, smaller branches. That's the easy part, luckily. So the way we do that is we go over to object paint. We're going to select our three branch types we're going to go to our list and we're going to say add selected we'll close that we want to make sure we're painting all randomly we want to make sure we're painting with objects in our list we want to be aligned to z because these are aligned to z um, we're going to use the ramp option again so they'll go from uh, larger to smaller as they get to the end so we'll set this to, I like doing 120 to like 60, something like that. Um, we'll change these settings so we know that in our rotation, in our rotation we're going to have a random Z. And we'll end up changing the Y. Uh, the X I don't think will change in this case. 
we'll change our spacing to. So we want to make sure we're painting with objects in our list. And we'll just start by going up one side of the tree. Whoops, we want to work on our selected object. And we'll turn on paint now. And let's make sure we're set to paint on selected only. Okay, so we're getting a lot of branches there. Um, might slightly scatter them a little bit along the X and along the Y, not too much. Uh, this is random, so that's good. The X direction, we're just gonna leave as is. And the Z direction, I want them to move angled uh, with the direction here. So I'd probably say maybe about 25 degrees, something like that. The spacing's a little cluttered. So I might space that out just a little bit. And I made one mistake here. If you let this number go really small, you're going to get a lot of branches. And it's going to take a second, and hopefully we don't crash again. So we'll just wait and see what happens. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you want to make sure you don't let this number get too small. So I'm just going to set that to 5. Hopefully that was 5 in the right direction there. There we go. I was accidentally dragging in the wrong direction. Uh, 5 doesn't look too bad. Uh, we'll go there. And now basically I just have to go through and paint these on. Uh, we should also make sure that the size that we're getting we like. Um, and I'm going to angle these a bit more, about 40 degrees. And we just kind of paint them on from here. And as I paint, I try to kind of zigzag on here so they all come out at kind of slightly different angles. At this point, I am very happy to be done with this tutorial based on what's been going on. Okay. And then I'm going to hit check. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some just going up different parts of the trunk here. And I'll make them slightly larger starting out. Since these ones are kind of on the trunk itself. I think I might be good there. Just so I can fill in some of the bottom parts here. Alright, let's see what we got. So I'm just going to hide these other ones. That should do it. So I'll hide those. Oh, we have one thing to do yet. But we want to make sure we like what we got. I like what we got. It looks like a tree to me. Uh, we're currently dealing with 22,000 triangles, which is pretty steep if we're using this for games. Um, we can do a lot to lower this amount uh, based on how many leaves we're painting, uh, how many polygons we're putting in the trees, how many branches we're actually painting there. This is a pretty full tree, you can see there. Um, but we have the final thing, which is a, putting it all together. So before I do that, we'll save as. And I want to show something really cool. Uh, if I unhide, since I've crashed before, my scene explorer for some reason has gone away. If 
why I'm just not having any luck with my computer tonight. Okay. So I'm going to take my original uh, branches. Actually, you know what? All I have to do really is just attach list. And in this case, I don't have any other objects in my scene. So I can just attach all of these. Now I save beforehand because sometimes this can take a minute and again, we don't want to crash the computer any more times than we already have. All right, so now we have one object in our scene except for the ones that are hidden. And if I just bring in a quick bit of lighting, we'll just put in a skylight. I'm not gonna turn on shadows for it. Um, and we'll see how long it'll take to render with the light there. And we'll toss an Omni light up top just to kind of brighten the top of it up. And we'll turn on to use attenuation. So it's a little brighter at the top than at the bottom. This should give us a better idea of what our tree looks like. Yeah, it's going to take a little while to render. All right, so we'll turn off the extra shadows there just so we can kind of shorten the video down here. But you can imagine the shadows on there, it's going to look nicer, but uh, we get this very nice uh, autumn tree. And again, if the bottom, if we had the ground texture on there, I'm going to stop this. Uh, if we had a ground or something like that. That bottom section is just going to give us something there. We can kind of mess around with that bottom. It's got this hard edge for one, which if we just want to get rid of that by itself. We'll just select the edge loop here. Double click it. And we can come to where it says... Um, edge properties, hard or smooth, smooth. And we turn that off. And now we don't have that hard edge there anymore. And then based on how I deform this, you know, I can make this look a little nicer, but yeah, we'll make the ground green. Just so we can get an idea. You could use object paint to paint grass in here, you know, what have you. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully you like the end result there. Uh, definitely had some issues getting everything <laughs> kind of working in this video, but um, this is one of the better ways that I've come up with uh, for creating this look, um, for having leaves and having, you know, nice lush uh, leaves, you know, to where we don't really see through it so much. Depending on how uh, many of these we end up painting on here, uh, it's really going to determine what our final look is going to look like. Uh, but thanks for sticking with me for this series. Um, this last video has definitely gone longer than expected. Uh, the entire series is about two hours long, so I understand if uh, you guys skipped around to get to this point to see what the final result is going to look like. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for sticking with me, uh, for subscribing, for commenting, for liking, you know, all of that good stuff that you hear everybody say. Uh, it really means a lot to me, um, especially the comments. I like hearing what you guys like about the videos. Any suggestions you have for any other videos, you know, please let me know. But until then, I'm just going to say thanks for watching.